when you come to your Pearson page after you first log in, you always click on the 2012-2013 release to get to our uh, latest version. Click on that. And from the home page there, you'll have your existing courses that you've been using this past semester. One of the tricks that you can do is you actually have the ability to copy your course. And so this, for instance, this Spanish course, and again, everything I'm going to go over applies to any uh, My Language Lab course. Um, you will have the ability to copy no matter which My Language Lab it is. If you hover your mouse over a course in your um, in your My Courses page, you'll notice you'll see an options menu. You can click on that and then notice you have the ability to copy as instructor course. Um, and so let's walk through those steps and then I'll also explain what gets copied and what doesn't and um, why if ever you would not want to copy a course. So let's walk through the steps first. Uh, so if you wanted to copy this course, so I had taught this this past semester and now I'm going to be teaching a, um, the same course but just with a new set of students for a brand new semester. And so I'm going to put my mouse over that, uh, that particular course and now I'm going to choose copy as instructor course and a window will pop open which will allow me to edit the name of my new course and so this will be the name of my new course that I'm currently creating and copying from the previous course I was using. Uh, please know that you're, the course that I'm copying it from, the course I was just teaching, that will always stay in your um, in your list uh, and I'm not going to be modifying or changing anything to that existing course. Um, I'm just simply going to be copying uh, that course over. And so I can rename this for my new semester. Uh, so I can call this let's say Spring 2013 Spanish 100 and maybe I'm teaching Section 2 next semester. Uh, so even though I'm not going to have Section 1 or Section 3 listed, um, if I'm specifically teaching Section 2, I can put this here in the name. Because don't forget, this is the name that your students will also see uh, when you give them your course ID number. And you will need to provide them with a brand new course ID number each semester for each of your courses or sections you're teaching. And notice you have the start and end date. Uh, and so it will um, be retrofitted. And so you want to make sure you change that start and end date uh, so that it will reflect your new semester. So just click on the calendar link and then select um, the start date of your new course for the next semester. And I'm just going to say January 1st. And don't forget, the date you choose here will be the day and any day after that your students will be able to use your ID and be able to enroll in your course. So if you plan on handing your ID out before the first day of class, make sure you choose that start date that you think you'll be handing that ID out or prior to that so that your students, when they use your ID, they'll be able to get into your course. You can always modify and change these start and end dates, even for a copied course. So I'm going to choose January 1st and then I'm going to select an end date for my class. And this will just be the last day your students will have access to this particular course uh, link in their program and in their account. Stop. In their account. And you will always be able to access your course prior or after an end date. Uh, don't forget, oh, I highly recommend a tip to make sure you set your end date after a final exam. So don't select your actual last day of class uh, because you may want to have your students to be able to review uh, their course materials before the final. And so possibly select maybe the day that grades are due um, or a week after grades are due. Uh, anytime uh, you just want to make sure it's enough time for your students to still have uh, the ability to open and look at your course. So I'm going to select um, the end of May. And then all you need to do is click copy. Now notice I'm taken back to my home page of my courses and a new link is now appearing. Um, it will take a few minutes to be prepared so that's why you're seeing the message courses being prepared and will be available soon. But notice my new name appears and notice I've also received a new course ID number. This will be the new ID number I will need to give my students in my next semester uh, for them to be able to enroll and have access to this particular course. Um, once this course loads, um, you'll then be able to open it and um, prepare your course uh, with a few more steps. Now, while this course is loading, let's take a quick minute and talk about what got copied and what didn't in this course. And the nice news is that 
pretty much everything gets copied over. And so this can save you time. So for example, what are some things that just got copied over? Well, if I had rearranged any of my course materials, so if I had created new folders, changed the names of folders, that would get copied over. Uh, if I changed any settings or preferences uh, in my previous section, so if I had changed the number of attempts, uh, changed uh, the timing, um, had set some specific parameters uh, with regards um, to uh, when the students could see the feedback or the correct answer, if I changed any of those settings, those also get copied over. Um, if I created any tests, online tests, um, that gets copied over as well, and any documents I had uploaded or created. So pretty much anything that you did in your course uh, gets copied over. The one thing that does not get copied over, or the one thing that happens, is um, in order for you to make assignments for the next semester, let's take a look at my current semester. So I'm going to click into the course that I currently have. Now notice I have some assignments on this calendar, and the most recent assignment um, was last week on the 6th. This was my current semester. In my new semester that I'm going to be teaching starting in January, this particular assignment um, is not going to be applicable. You know, I'm going to need to make new assignments for my new semester. And so what will happen in a copied course is once that new copied course loads, this assignment and any other assignment that I've had in any of the other months prior to today will be removed and taken off the calendar. Okay, so the assignments will be removed in the copied course. So I'll have a clean calendar. However, what doesn't get removed, the program will remember which activities I did have on my calendar in the previous uh, semester. And so when you'll go into your assignments calendar, which I'll show you in the new copied course, you'll be able to easily filter and tell which activities you had already assigned previously. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, well, what if I was going to not assign the same activities? Maybe I'm going to not assign certain ones. Well, you will still have the ability to uh, deselect those activities um, and not have them marked, be marked as assigned and be able to um, just quickly assign new dates to the calendar. And we'll go over that in the copied section. Now that my copied section is now available, I'm going to click on it to open it and let's walk through what did and did not get copied. Notice now my I'm in my copied course, so my new course for my new semester, and notice the alarm clock is no longer on December 6th, um, and the alarm clocks on all my other days on the calendar prior to today are also no longer on my calendar. So this gives me a fresh calendar so my students won't be penalized for doing work that was previously assigned to them in the past and I can free to assign new content uh, to my new semester. The My Language Lab remembers uh, which content I did decide to assign. And so what's the quickest way to, to make a new assignment and to see what you had already assigned in the past? Uh, since we do have so many activities and wonderful resources that you can assign, we know you might not be assigning all of them. And so we wanted to give you a way that you can easily tell which items you did currently assign previously without having to refer to your syllabus. When you go to the Assignments Calendar tab, Notice you'll, all, you'll continue to have your list of content. Um, what would get copied over is if you had reorganized any of this content, if you had added any of your own content, um, any tests that you created as well will get copied over. And so you do not need to recreate any tests. And also, uh, any gradebook setup you had done. So if you had created your own columns, changed any gradebook settings, uh, created a final grade with weights, all of that would be saved um, and remembered for you. And of course, you could edit or tweak any of these settings, um, but the bulk of it would be already done for you, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel each semester. If I wanted to see what I currently assigned, um, I could, uh, there's, there's two ways. There's two ways. Um, I could click into a previous chapter that I know I covered in the uh, past semester, and if I know I had assigned the student activities manual, I could click and open that. And notice inside this activities manual, uh, one of the areas over on the right, you'll see a blue check mark. This blue check mark uh, will represent um, an item that had previously been assigned on the calendar and is now just marked with assigned status in your course. Um, but without a due date. And so you could quickly walk, look through and find the blue check marks and know that those were items you had already assigned in the past and you could select them again and drag and drop them to a day on your calendar.
for the new semester. And then notice they'll change to an alarm clock status. If you see a blue check mark and maybe quite possibly you decided you no longer want to have this activity assigned in your new semester, you can select that activity over on the left, but instead of dragging it to the calendar, you need to make sure that you unassign it. And so your students won't be uh, asked to complete this activity in your new semester. So just select the item and choose assign unassign. It'll ask, are you sure? And you say, okay and that notice the blue check mark is now removed from that particular activity. Here is a little tip and trick. Uh, since we do have a lot of wonderful activities here and you might want to not have to look through and look for the blue check mark, you have a way to filter your view and your assignments calendar page just to items that you had previously assigned or are set to assign status. Notice over here you have show and it's set to all items so you can see every item available in your course materials. If you use the drop down menu, notice that you have options now to filter to show different items. And so one of the ways that you can quickly see what you had previously assigned last semester is to change your status to show items assigned. This will pull up anything that has a blue check mark or anything you've already assigned with an alarm clock. And you will, it'll filter out of your view all the other activities in your course at the moment. And you can always refilter back to show all items. And so just click items assigned and choose apply. The page will refresh. And now when I click into any chapter, for instance, if I go back into chapter two and click into any activity folder, for instance, the student activities manual, I'm only going to see the student activities manual activities that I have that have this blue check mark or an alarm clock. And so notice I'm only seeing six activities from chapter two. And now in our chapter two student activities manual activities, we have many, many more activities than that. So it filtered out of my view the other activities I never assigned. And so if you were making um, if you were assigning a group of all the Chapter 2 activities to a day on the calendar, you could quickly filter to items assigned, and this will stay in your status as you move through the different chapters. And then you could come in and select the activities that you wish to assign to the new day. And you can even select all if you wanted to, um, if you had not already assigned items, or you could go in and select individual items as well, or a group of activities to assign to a day. And then quickly and easily drag and drop them to a day on the calendar for their new assignment. You can always filter back to all items, or if you, you can also uh, go to items that you have not assigned. So if you want to make some new assignments or see what other activities you have that you never assigned last semester that you may want to add this semester, you can switch your view. And you had th then just copied your course over. Now what if you were also teaching another section of this course? One way to save yourself time would be to to make the first copy. So I copied my Spanish 110 course and I made a copy of it. And so now, what if I'm actually teaching two sections in the spring of the same exact course with the same assignments? One trick you can do is make your copy of your previous semester so it saves all your settings and anything you might have customized or changed. And it removes the due dates off the calendar for your new section. You could then go into your new section, make your assignments on the calendar for your new semester, and then after you make all your assignments, when you, you can then decide to copy the new section as well and make a copy of it. This will copy over any new assignments you've made. So any new assignments you've made to your calendar uh, in the future will also continue to copy over. So the only thing that ever gets removed when you make a copy is any assignments that were assigned in the past, past the day that you choose copy on your options menu. And so this will save you time because then you can copy your course again, rename it, you know, Spring 2013 Spanish 100 Section 4, and you'll have another link with a separate course ID number specifically for each of those sections. And so you would give all your students in your sp a certain section that particular new course ID number, and you would give your other students the other course ID number for your new section. And then you'd have your copied course. This concludes how to copy a course inside your My Language Lab 2012-2013 release.